In recent videos, I've talked about hash tables and bloom filters, both data structures that depend on hash functions. How do we choose these hash functions? The properties we're looking for in a hash are fast and well distributed. When we say fast, one of the things we mean is non-cryptographic. Cryptographic hashes have a number of properties that are absolutely necessary for security purposes. Given an output, you can't guess an input that will generate that output, so the mod 100 function is not cryptographic. If you wanted to target 74, it would be easy to guess a value that would produce 74, 174, 274. This is called pre-image resistance. Given an input and output, you can't find a nearby input with the same output. This is called second pre-image resistance. And finally, you can't find any two inputs with the same output. This is called collision resistance. While these properties are completely and absolutely necessary for security applications, they're completely unnecessary for data structures, and they come at a performance cost, so don't use cryptographic hashes for data structures. When we say well distributed, what we mean is that no matter how similar your data is, there should be about an equal chance of those data appearing anywhere in your hash table. Hash functions that exhibit this quality are known as avalanching hashes, because small changes in the input lead to large changes in the output. This avalanche effect is also a desirable property in cryptographic hashes. A common hash used for this purpose is the non-cryptographic, well-avalanching public domain Murmur3, implementations of which exist for most modern languages, and which has appeared in numerous open source products, including Hadoop, Cassandra, and Nginx. It also takes a seed value, so you can create dozens of different hash functions out of Murmur3. Thanks for your time.